What is going on, my fellow crypto enthusiasts? Today, we are going to do a deep dive. Well, I'm not sure how deep, but a dive into the blockchain world. So there's two big players out there, the Sandbox and Decentraland. And I know there's others entering. There's others that already exist, like OVR and some others. But I wanted to dive into the Sandbox and Decentraland because they both have their own uh, tokens right now, sand and mana, that can be used for their in-game or experiences that you can have through these platforms. And I wanted to do a quick little walkthrough on Decentraland. I am very new, very green when it comes to Decentraland and the Sandbox, but I plan to explore both and start getting immersed into these worlds and seeing the avenues that are uh, possible for me to generate some residual income, uh, just maybe some cash flow from either renting out land or maybe having billboards that direct people to other sites that I have. So I'm excited to just check this out and I wanted you guys to just see how you can run this off of your browser. So I'm gonna dive right in. I'm gonna go over some of the basic controls and just to give you guys a quick little experience of Decentraland coming from somebody that's new just like you. So let's dive right in and let's check this out. I am gonna get myself off the screen so you guys can see the entire screen and you're not missing out on anything. So let's get right into this. So first things first, I just typed Decentraland into Google and it's Decentraland.org is the actual website that you're gonna go to. You always wanna check links anytime that you're doing anything related to crypto or the blockchain just to make sure you're not um, being scammed. You're not doing anything that's going to compromise your wallet. Uh, we are using the Chrome browser right now, and I do have it in full screen mode. Uh, you can see up here, I do have my MetaMask uh, loaded. Uh, MetaMask is the wallet that I use uh, through the browser, and I do have my MetaMask uh, already connected to Decentraland, but that's what you're going to be doing, and that's what I recommend using is your MetaMask. So we're going to just do this. We're going to do this uh, get started or start exploring. Either of those will work. And again, I have created myself a pro profile. I do have an avatar on here, uh, but this is that uh, main page. Once you go to click play, you can play as a guest or you can click play. Play as guest, I believe, is going to be for somebody that might not have a wallet set up just yet. Uh, but we're going to click on play because we have ourselves a wallet. So we're going to click on this, which you're going to be doing this each time you play, which allows you to play from a different browser, uh, a different computer. Uh, so that's the one nice thing. Uh, we're going to just sign that. And here we go. It's loading. You can see the bar down here at the very bottom. And it is just dropping us right into what we'll call a hub, a central hub. And you can tell that I don't have a character showing up right now. But if this is, and I do have a character, you just don't see them on the screen. It's in first person view. You can see my uh, avatar up here in the top right. If you do not have an avatar, and this is your very first time, I'm gonna click up here in, on my avatar. You're gonna end up on a screen that looks similar to this that allows you to customize your avatar so if you happen to have already maybe purchased some NFTs for some clothing or accessories uh, those would be showing up here as long as your MetaMask wallet address is the same address you're using to access Decentraland so be careful with that but we're gonna back out of this because we've already created our uh, avatar and what you're seeing is our main hub here, I am going to hit C. The first button I want to tell you guys is C. C is your button that will show you your controls. So when you hit C, your controls pops up. You can see, let's start in the top left and we'll work our way across and then down. You got M for your map uh, or tab. You have the C, which we just went over, which brings up our controls or control panels, they call it. Uh, click the world to lock the cursor and control your avatar's view. So if you ever have this cursor view, like you're staring at my cursor right now and you want to get back, you can actually just right click and it'll bring you right back in. And then escape will bring your cursor back. And that's something to remember. Um, I think that's really important when you first get started is figuring out how to get your cursor back. Your WASD, very similar to a lot of video games out there, is going to be your movement along with your space bar for jumping. Uh, v will put us back into first or third person view. Uh, I will bring up our backpack or inventory as I like to call it. 
uh, U will hide the UI so you can have a nice clean screen. And then you can uh, hold T to talk. That's on the bottom left here with the microphone. You have It's push to talk, so talk won't just always be activated. Enter so you can chat um, and L uh, for more of a social. X is to find some experiences or you'll see just to move around. And a P is for your settings. And you can also click on these if you don't want to use those keys. Uh, and then B, uh, I forgot to go over this, which is your emotes. Uh, trigger each emote by pressing the numerical key one through seven. So I'm gonna hit escape and then I'm gonna hit V so you can actually see my camera. Well, you saw my cursor. Again, escape brings your cursor back, right click, and now all of a sudden we can move around. Well, hello there. So you can see WASD, I am moving around, jumping. I don't like that view. I'm more of a third person kind of a guy, which I had to hit V to get into that first person third person. Now, if I hold the alt, and this is something the controls don't tell you, and this is very similar to games, that's how I just knew to do this, but if you hold down alt and then spin your mouse, it's like a free look. I mean, it will stay around your character, but it is a free look. So there you go, there's my character. Uh, and just so you guys are aware, I am using... I am running an RTX 3070 graphics card. So I do have a decent graphics card in this computer. Uh, they say you do not need that much system resources to run this game, but I'll tell you, if you're doing mining or you have other programs or resources being used, I would recommend maybe closing them out your first time running this just to see how, how clean of an experience you can have, meaning like on a fresh reboot, load this up. If you start to get any kind of lag or anything like that, that way you can at least pin it more on the actual server and the game uh, than you can your computer. But overall, this runs uh, somewhat smooth for me. And uh, there's a couple things. Obviously, we could dive right in there. You got a bunch of different uh, experiences that are being pushed to people right from the get-go. And the one thing I'll tell you that I do like about Decentraland uh, over Sandbox right at this moment in July is that Decentraland is an open metaverse right now. It is usable, meaning you can run from piece of land to piece of land. So speaking of that, let's hit M and bring up our map. So you can see we're at our Genesis Plaza. Uh, one thing I have not figured out how to do is uh, do a zoom out on the map, unfortunately. Um, the only thing you can do is drag around, and it's not a huge map. You can see, okay, there's the top of our map there. We're gonna scroll all the way across, then we're gonna come down. And there you go, that's the entire map. And from my understanding, they will not be releasing new pieces of land. So even though you see these boxes down here, my understanding is that will not become available. Uh, the gray lines you're looking at, those are streets or roads. I don't know if you're gonna be able to drive a vehicle or ride a bike or use a skateboard in this game. Uh, I have seen some actual like skateboard parks and things like that. Um, but let's just get started here. So I will click the X and again, let's go back into the map. <laughs> And you'll see we're in the plaza and all these little red dots are people. I don't know the difference in the grays. Um, unfortunately, maybe they're AFK. Uh, but the red dots are people. The little yellow star is us. Actually, I'm sorry, the red uh, dot here, um, the big one uh, with the arrow, that is us. So we're in the Genesis Plaza. You can click on any one of these pieces of land and jump right in. And if you're happen, happening to be shopping for land, which I'm not going to dive into too much right now, you could take those coordinates. So let's say I'm interested in 1414. Quick little thing here. I'm going to click on, I'm on OpenSea.io. This is an NFT uh, buying, selling, trading platform. Um, I could come up here and I could type in Decentraland, oh, Decentraland, 1414. This is, I'm showing you how to search for land right now. Do not use the minuses or parentheses. They won't be recognized in the OpenSea search. You have to just take the two numbers, do a space between them and hit enter. And you'll have to just find the exact parcel. And you'll see that uh, they actually have the minus next to those. Uh, but if we wanted to look for this exact one, 
Obviously, they got multiples that are going to have the 1414. You just got to search for it, and that's just one way if there's a very specific uh, parcel or something that you are wanting to look for. So if there is a piece of land that you do have interest in, um, this is going to be uh, the quickest way that I'm aware of to search for it. And then once you find it, you would be able to just click in on that. It's going to bring you here. You can see this person has theirs listed for 25 Ethereum. Um, and it looks like they might even be the original owner of this one. But that's not what this is about. This is about just hopping around. So let's do that. Let's just uh, let's let's go back to that 14 for let's just click on 1414 and jump in. Let's just let's go straight to that piece of land. And it is something I really like about this. It is easy, easy to navigate. And again, once we're on this piece of land, we can go to we can run around and go to anything else. Welcome El Grandane. You are in the Statue of Liberty. Interesting. All right. I'm just looking around. All right. W A S D running around. And here's my biggest gripe with Decentraland right now. This is a good plot to show you the size of the piece of land that you are getting into central land when you buy a piece of land a single plot i want to say it's a 12 by 12 i forget the dimensions they mention but that's it you're you're, you're seeing it I, I just ran the whole thing compared to the sandbox it is night and day difference and the price of land is more expensive on Decentraland, land probably because there's not as much but a single parcel right now in july will run you on average the lowest i've seen is about 5,000 mana and this is for listed properties i'll uh, i'm gonna hit escape real quick so i can click back up here on open cio um, if we remove the plot so buy now on decentral land has a thousand results it's already set to uh, let's see, highest last sale. Let's just see, last one sold for 80,000 mana. And if I go price low to high, you can see 5,000 mana right now. So 5,000 mana um, is actually gonna run you about $2,500. Uh, the price right now of Decentraland via coin market cap is about 51 cents. So ba basically, 5,000 mana is going to cost you about 2,500. So the average, if you just want to say average price you're going to be paying for a piece of Decentraland land is probably between 2,500 and 3,000 US dollars. If you look at things in the dollar, some people only care about it in say the Ethereum. So, so in that aspect, you're paying probably roughly a little over one Ethereum for a piece of land right now. And this is what you get. So because of the size of these, you see a lot of people building up like this person has done over here because you got to get the most bang for your buck depending on the experience that you're looking to create for someone. Like this person has a house here. I like the look of this. It's cool. But look at that. So you got a big four-story house there. Come up here, interact by left clicking, and you can see, like, see how my feet are in this right now? I'm sure that's just the way they've created it, but I'm, I'm not a fan of that. That's one thing I would say I'm not crazy about. I'm not really sure how to make it up to the other floors. Maybe this is their first house they've built. But anyways, that is how, oh, and this is what I do like about Decentraland. You can just run around and if you look in the top left at your map, they got a nice little map there and it's showing you running from parcel to parcel. This person has a two by two piece of land, which is pretty neat. Uh, doesn't look like we can do anything. If there's something you can interact with, that little uh, white circle on the front of my, uh, in front of my character right now, that's basically where I can left click on things. All right, so let's do this. Let's uh, keep showing you guys some things on here. We got, I'm gonna hit escape and I'm gonna come down here to the explore. So if we click on explore and what, oh, one other thing while we're staring at this, on this more right over here, there's that hide UI, the controls, you can get to a lot of the things uh, quickly just through these, uh, the hamburger dots or whatever you wanna call them. But night mode, I actually really like the night mode. Uh, it's just, that's how I am. The only thing I'll say is a certain experience you might go into might be better suited uh, for the bright conditions. But I like running around in the dark, and I don't think this is a game that's going to have you know night and day. So you really get to choose which mode you want to run it in. So again, escape, 
go there, you can do day mode. I personally like the night mode. Either either way, neither of them look that bad. I do wish there was a hotkey for that night mode. I don't think there is. I'm hitting N right now. Again, we got I for our inventory. U removes the UI, nice clean look. Spacebar for jump. C for our controls. V brings us in and out. All right, so I'm gonna hit tab, go to our map. So let's see here. We had our plaza. Let, let's do something. So there is uh, an NFT project that they updated their white paper yesterday or their roadmap, and it's Deadheads. And Deadheads told us that they have been creating a metaverse and they've been working on one. So I wanted to check it out today. And that's why I actually had loaded up Decentraland today. And the coordinates for it are minus 86, minus 109. I've already been there, so I knew it was right over here, but we're gonna hop right over there. You can see it says Deadhead's Graveyard, created by Drop Acid, jump in. So this is an NFT project. They do, they will be adding a utility of some sort so that holders of the Deadheads will have some sort of ac uh, maybe limited access or unique private access to their graveyard here. And, and this is one of those things where it's like I, I question, would this look better or be better suited for the sandbox or Decentraland? You know, pick your poison. It's up to you. And this is why. They have a nice piece of 3x3 three three land here. And this, and this person right here has a 1x1. One one. And look what they did. They constructed a big box called the Sport Shack. And there's an entrance somewhere over here. There's an entrance. You can run in here and you can see they got really nothing in here right now. They've just, they just created something. But you see how that is? See how it butts up against the land right there and just the size of it? You have no control over what people do next to you. And that's the sandbox or the central land. But people are going to be erecting up more often than not because of the limited amount of space that you're getting. So you can see this person just erected straight up. There's So you could be surrounded by like glowing neon lights like this thing right here. And you don't have any control over it. So there's pluses and minuses to that. But talk about great advertising depending on who's next to you on your map. So there's 10,000 NFTs for deadheads. Let's say at a given time you got 100 people hanging out right here at this plot of land. They're going to be looking at what's around. They're going to be running around to the experiences that are right around them and clicking on things, checking things out. So they haven't really done much with this. Uh, I'll be curious to see how they use it. But let's just run over here and show you something. This is probably one of my favorite, besides the advertising aspect of the central land and how you can just be hanging out with people in here and, and talking. You could be hosting maybe like a little chat or conference. If you come into like platforms like this, you can open UI. And what's really neat is if I click on this, it's showing me NFT information and data you can view it on OpenSea. so if we click on that it's going to bring us to the actual nft where we could make an offer to this person if we wanted uh, but you can actually see it you could get some basic information on it so that's where some real value starts to come into play with decentraland and nfts and you can do that you can see a little bit of lagginess there so I'm not sure if you guys can hear the volume from my computer or not, but as soon as I step into this one, some music starts up. I'm gonna turn it up. Oh, some heavy bass. Now, I, I gotta say that's pretty badass. I'm not sure how the sound works with this, you know, in terms of licensing and that sort of thing. All right, we just stood on an elevator, popped us up here to second floor to second floor Ooh, look at that all right so we just felt we just happened to fall on a certain floor but you can see they're using they're they've created basically an nft gallery here so if we click on one of these you know this is a great way to host artwork if you have artwork maybe you just want to show off your own collection that you've got uh question is how do we get out of here here we go jump you can't really you can't die in decentraland that i'm aware of all right, so next things now, let's go back into this explore down here, which again, you can hit X or you can just click on it. You can't use those hotkeys though, unless you're out of that cursor. So if we're back in here, we could hit X and it'll bring up our explore and play. 
it's taken a second to load. So I'm gonna exit that. I'm gonna show you, you could also just click this. It's the exact same. And let's just go into, this is showing us the number of people in each. And I don't know if the explore and play right now is being pumped by Decentraland and who they choose to have show up on here, uh, or it's in order of who has the most uh, people on their piece of property at the time and the most experience is happening. Uh, I, I'd be interested to know that. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Wonder Mine is pretty popular right now. So let's jump over to Wonder Mine and see what's going on there because it seems to be 100 people in that area. So I want you to see uh, what it's like when you're around other avatars in the game and just show you some quick things with the avatars. So this is taking a little bit longer than I would expect, but it's loading the scene. Could be because there's a bunch of people there. There you go. It's a little, I'll say this, it's a, it's a little laggy loading this up. And I am not running anything. I do have a couple different Chrome browsers loaded up right now on the computer. And I have already been to this area uh, once before today, uh, just to check it out. Uh, you can see though, wow, they're very, very laggy. All right, here we go. All right, we're running around. But here you go, just, to, just so you guys can see what this world is all about. So this is a huge, go up to the map here. You can see this is a big area. And a couple different things that they're showing that you can actually be doing here. Um, it's like some sort of a game, Craftomatic. Next, bronze, you can forge from copper with a hardwood handle, this axes. So if you get these resources here, you can create this axe. And if you come over here, you can actually use mana to buy in-game items. So if I click on this, it's gonna load up my MetaMask and it's asking if I would like, look at that gas fee. What in the world, $530. <laughs> Anyways, rejecting that. If you had mana in your wallet, it would let you do it. Obviously, you can take your Ethereum. You can do a swap right in MetaMask. Uh, gas fees lately have been crazy. But here you go. Here's a little tutorial of what Wondermine is. Tap a meteor and your axe starts mining. You need five Wonder Coins. You get 100 free each day. If you run out more, go to the coin cart, collect materials, craft the machine, collect enough ingredients to craft wearables and wonder zone nfts so one thing i'm not sure of if like when they're doing something like that i can only have my wonder zone nft in their area but let's see if we can't find one of those little meteor things that they were talking about you can see things in the background are loading up as i get closer sandwich game look at this i mean it's cool I mean, it's a big open world. It's not, I'll say this, there's a little bit of lag. I think it's still being perfected. More people are obviously gonna be joining this, but that will be the big question. How much can a browser-based game really handle when you start getting thousands and thousands of people joining these? All right, here's one of those little mining balls over here. So we're gonna go up to it, left-click mine. Looks like, um hitting it away so you can see down here it's showing me how many of those coins I have if I click on this it's showing me items and these items right here that you're seeing that's because I was in here about 30 minutes before this video just playing around learning a little bit and I had collected those so it looks like they do stick with you because I had logged out level up you got loot level two iron ten wonder coins one wonder gem so that would go away. I'm not able to pick those up. They just went straight into the inventory. So if you wanted to run around mining, you could do that and maybe you end up with some sort of a NFT of some sort. I'm gonna click that and get it to go away. But here's a couple other things. People can integrate their Twitter into this, uh, their Discord. Uh, just a whole lot of different unique things you can add to your experience. And that's gonna be up to the individual person and what they wanna do. So last thing, I'll just show you guys one other type of experience here. Let's uh, we're gonna go into the map one more time. Here's a cool little place up here called Barter Town. I'm gonna jump into Barter Town and just show you just some other things people can be doing with their experiences that they're creating. Again, I don't know if roads will have the ability to have cars and things like that. If so, I think having a piece of this land um, that's adjacent to a piece of 
uh, of the road could uh, have some value to it just from an aspect or a point of view of advertising and having billboards up. You know, somebody might want to buy one of these little pieces of land and just throw up a billboard. So here we go. We are at the Barter Town helping build a better tomorrow. Pretty cool, tall building. They got their advertising right there on the outside. Look, at, it's at one of those billboards that actually like you know, flips across. That's pretty cool. So you can come in here. Little memes. Oh, look, you got a little sliding door with access. A little bit of lag again. I'm gonna run up to this door, wait for it to open. It's the only way in there. And then here you go, like a, a cool place where people could just be hanging out. You could chill by the fake bar. That's what I want to do. Here's some advertising here. Acquainting, that's clever, dot com. Oh, did you hear that? I don't know if you guys can hear that. So I came in here and you can start hearing that music. And as you get away, it starts to fade. So that, that's pretty neat. Club Zion, come in here. I'm guessing, yep. Got some NFTs on the wall. Some art, left click to visit this site. Here you go, you can go right to a website, right from Decentraland. So here we go, what's this? Another piece of art that you could buy. So great way, if you're an artist, to show off pieces of land. This one's interesting, I've clicked on this one before. This land lease entitles the holder to rent on land parcel such and such. And this one last sold for, I saw 15 Ethereum. So that's interesting. So, so yeah, pretty cool. So what'd you guys think of that? I mean, what do you think of Decentraland? That's gonna be for each person, company, and business to come to a conclusion and see if this is gonna be a good use of their money. I mean, again, it's anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000 to get one of those small pieces of land. But should you get that next to some big company like an Atari or somebody like that, there might be some real value to people just wandering over to your parcel and clicking or buying a piece of your art or getting traffic to your website, maybe your YouTube page, things like that. So a lot of different things you can do with this. Sky's the limit, literally, and more to come on this. So uh, I hope you guys got something out of this quick little Decentral Land tour. And if you got questions, throw them in the comments, but hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and I'll bring more Decentraland videos to you guys in the following weeks and months. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.